The comm system crackled. Ash's voice sounded over the speakers. Cap, he said. Better get up here. We got something. This doesn't sound good. Elspeth exchanged a look with Callan. 100% legit cargo, right? Elspeth asked. Yes, it is. Callan was already on the ladder up to the bridge and opening the hatch. He pulled himself through into the forward section of the ship. What you got? he asked, wrestling himself across and into the co-pilot seat. IR, Ash replied, pointing to the display. Callan could see the display was showing an energy reading. It was a passive scanner that all ships used to keep an eye on anything in their immediate whereabouts. It's gone now, Ash replied, but it was almost overloaded a few moments ago. Watch. Ash toggled the replay mode. Callan watched as a bright flare of energy was recorded on the scanner. How long was it? Easily a minute, Ash replied. Came from the vicinity of the gate. Got to be another ship. Power? Callan asked. Lots, Ash said with a shrug. Way more than we have, anyway. Big burn from a big engine and then... Nothing. Callan cursed. Somebody in a hurry and doesn't want to be seen. Question is why? Looks like it, Ash said. It was oriented towards us, too. They might be heading for Higgins, but... Check this. Ash showed him a screen that was completely full of mathematics. I transposed a bunch of predicted parameters from the burn metrics and then interpolated them with our own trajectory. Just give me the one-syllable version, Callan snapped. Based on what I saw from the burn, Ash said, if the other ship assumed we're pushing 1G, which is easy enough for them to verify from behind if they know our ship class, they could be on an intercept vector with us. We won't see them coming until they spin around and hard burn to match our course. You think it's leeches? Callan asked. Well, we all know they operate out of captains. Could be. How long to a potential intercept? Ash looked through the maths again. It's difficult to be precise. Just give me a range. Ash sighed. Could be ten minutes. Maybe up to twenty. Somewhere in there. Too many parameters to be more exact. What do you suggest? Ash looked across the instruments. Well, pretty sure we can't outrun them. Our best bet is to go dark ourselves and hope they don't have active scanners. Callan gritted his teeth. So we're hoping for a leecher who's as poor as we are and just chancing their luck. It might not be leechers at all, Ash replied. It could be just someone who wants to stay out of sight. With our luck, Callan replied, grabbing the comm link and thumbing the button. Cass, Elspeth, buckle in for zero G. We're going dark. Could be someone who's tracking us. Come with that, Cap. Elspeth's voice came back straight away. I've just got the tools out to fix that thruster. Cash aggrieved tones followed. Give me a minute to square stuff away. Be quick. Cash grumbled something unintelligible, and then all that could be heard was a variety of curse words and the sounds of metal tools being shoved into compartments. Done. Strapping in now. Callan turned back to Ash. Cut the engines. Weightlessness returned. The steady thrum of the engines faded and all that was left was the background whir of life support. There was no sense of motion in the Ophidian. After a few moments, and anxious for more news, Elspeth and Cass joined Callan and Ash in the cramped cockpit area. Anything? Callan asked. Ash shook his head. I'm not seeing anything on IR at all. Sensors are still cooling, though. We'll get a bit more resolution in the next few minutes. If they do a hard burn to match us, we'll see it. Callan nodded. How long do they pass us? Ash sighed. I'd say if we don't see a burn in five minutes, they'll have overshot our position and we should be in the clear. We'd better be ready just in case, Elspeth said. Callan nodded. Cass, engine room. Be ready for hard burn. Elspeth, you and I will man the turrets in case they chuck any ordnance in our direction. Ash, just do what you can. That's not going to be much, Ash complained. Cass threw herself down the ladder with a live, fluid motion born out of years of practice and disappeared into the lower deck. Callan and Elspeth wrestled themselves into the ship's midsection where another ladder led up and down to the pair of turrets on the outside of the ship. In zero G, it was entirely up to you which way you decided was up and down. Either worked. Callan and Elspeth both decided that was up was above them and climbed the ladders in opposite directions. Callum jabbed the shipwide intercom. No time for suits, he called. Ash, 
Put the ship on lockdown once everyone reports they're in place. Aye, Cap. Ash's voice sounded tinny coming out of the small speakers in the turret. Callan pulled himself into the small seat nestled under a multi-panel canopy and activated the weapons. With a whir, the seat spun him around, responding to a flight yoke with a trigger set in the centre top. I'm in, Callum called. Ready, Elspeth's voice sounded. Engine room is secure, Cass said. Locking down then, Ash replied. Good luck, everyone. With a heavy thump, airtight bulkhead doors slammed down, cutting off each individual compartment from the others. Each crew member was on their own now. Despite being in the vastness of space, spacers couldn't afford to be claustrophobic. Lockdown was a basic safety protocol, common to ships even prior to the days of space. You might breach a compartment, but the rest of the ship should survive. It didn't matter whether you hit an iceberg or someone had blown a hole in your ship. The same principle applied. Isolate the damage and stay operational. Emergency bulkhead so green, Ash said. Still nothing on sensors. Callan spun the turret slowly around on its axis. Ahead of the ship, the bright light of Captain Star was casting shadows across the hull. It was still not much more than a point of light, but there was no mistaking it for any other star. To their rear, space was the star-spangled visage, diagonally bisected by the Milky Way. The guns on the Ophidian were in no way a formidable arsenal. Few ships sported heavy-caliber weaponry outside of the military, it was pointless when a missile would do the job far more effectively and from outside visual range. No, the guns were entirely defensive, aimed at countering those very same missiles. Modern ships would have automatic suppression fire systems, decoys and flares, but there was nothing like that on the Ophidian. Partly because the ship was way too old, but mostly because such equipment cost a lot of rares to maintain and rearm. It's up to me and Elspeth to safeguard the ship if any of that shit comes our way. Instead, the Ophidian had manually operated ballistic cannons, which relied entirely on the skill of the gunners to be of any use. We're as cold as I can make us, Cass's voice said on the comm. EM is down, generators down, heaters are off. It's going to get chilly in here real quick. Copy that, Keller answered. He could already feel the coolness in the air. Thrusters are prepped for full burn, Caster continues. I've bypassed the safeties and we're good for 5G for a minute or two. Well, that's going to hurt, but unlikely it's going to be enough against whatever ship that's heading our way. Assuming it is heading our way. Good work, Cass, Callan said. Ash, anything? It's still dark, Ash replied. Just two more minutes. Just leave us alone. Fly on by. There's nothing of interest here. God, I are. Ash's voice was still as composed as ever. Full spectrum is definitely a burn. Target at 170 degrees. Range estimate is 300 clicks. Callan spun the turret around so it was pointed towards the rear of the Ophidian. Already he could see a bright flare against the backdrop of stars. It looked a little like a comet in reverse, but it was visibly moving and getting brighter all the time. You see it, Elspeth? I see it, the gruff voice came back. Keep us cool, Cass, Callan muttered. They won't be able to see us with all that heat they're chucking out, Cass replied. Not till they cut their engines. We're pretty dark on EM and IR, but if they've got radar, they'll spot us easy. Options running out here. If it is how I think it is, they're going to have radar. They're cutting thrust, Ash called. Reckon they pretty much nailed it. Lost them now. I'd say they're only 50 clicks out, tops. So they know what they're doing. I got radar pings, Ash called out. They've got us. Bearing is 143, Mark two, and closing. Cass, fire up everything. Callan yelled. There's no point trying to hide now. Elspeth, stay sharp. Ash? Cap? Ash's voice sounded confused. I got radio contact. They're asking. Asking for you. Me? Yeah, by name. Well, you better patch it through. There was a crackle of static and then the voice, attenuated by the connection, sounded across the link. Just isn't your lucky day, is it, Callan? That little cargo of yours is mine. Dump it out the hold and I'll let you go your merry way, no trouble. Just sit pretty and stand down your guns. Answer in a minute or I start doing things the hard way. There was a woman's voice. Jara, Callan cursed. You know her? 
Ash's voice queried. I've run into her before, Callan said. Ruthless little bitch. Made a packet out of drug running. Not much in the way of morals. Typical leecher. Must have a spy back in Dirk's Cancri keeping tabs on me somehow. We ain't just going to roll over, Cass snapped across the intercom. I say screw her. Ash? Callan asked. I can't tell what ship she's got from here. Ship is faster, that's all I know, Ash replied. I doubt we'll be able to outmaneuver her. No chance, Elspeth said. She's already running a lot of risk. No point compounding that by heading out here not being able to complete the job. If she knows the spec of our ship, it's not a bluff. Callan grimaced. Cass is right. We're not giving up our cargo. Anyway, what are we going to do without it? Can't pay her for repairs. Can't refuel the ship. Can't even buy breakfast. You guys want to eat, right? Assorted mutterings of assent greeted that comment. Open the com, Callan said. More static crackled in the void. Jara, Callan said, his voice all upbeat. Lovely to hear your dulcet tones again. You still owe me my last balance transfer, so I figure you owe me, not the other way round. How about you drop me a couple of canisters and we'll call it quits? Oh, Callan, Jara's voice came back. You never change, do you? You paid me for 30 tonnes, and for some strange reason, 60 tonnes is missing from my inventory. I'm taking that out of your hide. More static. Wait, you did a deal with a leecher, Elspeth said, in the silence that followed, and then double-crossed her. I don't believe this, Ash added. What were you thinking? Jara's voice cut across them. So, in the interest of good customer relations, I'm going to cut you a deal. Drop the cargo, or I'll space your crappy old ship and everyone aboard. I know all the canisters are vac sealed. They'll survive just fine. You've got 30 seconds. Of all the stupid brain dead, Elspeth hissed. Not now, Callan snapped. Cass, fire up the generators. Ash, plot us a 5G trajectory burning system. Go, now. It'll use up all the contingency fuel, Ash replied. I know. I'm hoping she hasn't got the Delta V to hang with us. It's our only shot. Callan locked his turret seat in the forward position, secured his arms and legs in the grabs, and listened out for the others reporting in. Ready, Elspeth called. Come on, come on. Good to go, Ash said. I'm good. Go, 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 Cass yelled. Hit it, 